speeches, even in solemn occasions, often start with a joke. Not tonight. Tonight is about honor, courage, character, and making a difference. I am honored to be speaking to you tonight. It is your courage, your character, and the fact that each of you has made a difference that has brought you here tonight to be recognized. So let's talk about courage. Courage comes in a couple of different flavors. There's moral courage, mental courage, physical courage. You know, physical courage is often what people think about when they talk about courage. They talk about the fact that there are soldiers that go and face the enemy unafraid. And I'll tell you, that's not correct. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is working through your fear and doing the right thing. Sometimes it takes courage just to get up in the morning. It takes courage to work on something that is incredibly difficult knowing you might fail. It takes courage to say no to your friends. In fact, in, in my opinion, it can take more courage to say no to your friends than it requires to face an adversary. It takes courage to build a strong foundation for the future. It takes courage to stay in school and earn an education. And let me emphasize the word earn because no one gets or is given an education. An education must be earned. Think about athletes, musicians, and anyone else that works hard at their craft. They practice endless hours to be good at the basics. And then they practice endless more hours to get better at the things that make them unique, their skills and their uh, capabilities. And education must be earned the same way. And so what's the reward for earning an education? President Abraham Lincoln said it best, that opportunity favors the prepared mind. So where do you look for those opportunities? My answer to that and my challenge to everyone is, actually comes in the form of a question. How far can you see? Put a different way, how big is your imagination? My recommendation, keep your imagination as big and as broad and as wide as you possibly can. Don't handcuff it. If you think about what we have today and from a technological standpoint or a social standpoint, you often saw that first in fiction. That's because authors let their imaginations run wild. Most of us, on the other hand, we handcuff it. We put it in a little tiny box. I mean, think about what you say. You come up with a great idea, a great concept, and then you put a filter on it, and you go, well, I need to do a reality check. And if you don't personally believe that it's possible, you throw that idea out with, like yesterday's trash. Right? It's gone. Don't handcuff your imagination. Think about 10 or 15 years ago. Now, that's before some of you were born. Others were real small. But still, think about 10 or 15 years ago. 10 or 15 years ago, no one heard of some of the jobs that are commonly available today. Nobody had heard of a market research data miner. Nobody had heard of a commercial drone pilot. Nobody had heard of a smartphone app developer, or a cloud computing services manager, or a biosustainability engineer. And that trend is not going to stop. There are going to be jobs for the folks that are going to be graduating in a decade or less that will address issues and problems we don't even know are issues and problems today, right? So think about, let's, let's, I'll challenge you to think about what's called additive layer manufacturing. How many people have heard of additive layer manufacturing? 
How many people have heard of 3D printing? Yeah. Additive layer manufacturing is 3D printing applied to manufacturing. What will be the job title in 10 or 15 years of the person who designs and prints cartilage that a surgeon implants in someone's knee? What will be the job title of someone who designs and prints food? Or someone who designs and prints houses? Unless you think this is an academic question, 3D printers that print houses exist today and are in use in areas where they have chronic housing shortages. They print concrete houses. They're not opulent, they're not elegant, but they house a family. They go up in three to four days per house and they are relatively inexpensive. And they'll get better and they'll get fancier. But those jobs already exist. You can just extrapolate. Have the courage to look. Have the courage to take the first step and the second and onward. The question, how far can you see, is a very important question. So let's move on to character. The, actually, let's, let's not. Let's, let me think about this a minute and, and let's talk about um, what it means to, to put handcuffs on your imagination. I'll, I'll go in the Wayback Machine, because I'm an older person. And back when I was a girl, I was often told by people what girls could not or should not do. People tried to put boundaries around my imagination. And I will tell you that if I had accepted and believed any of that, and believed it could not or should not, I would not be here tonight. Keep your imagination as broad as you can. I'll give you an example that came from when I was uh, actually getting ready to apply for the Manned Space Flight Engineering, excuse me, Manned Space Flight Engineer Program that Linda mentioned. I was a captain, it was back in the 1980s, and the Department of Defense was directed to launch some of their satellites on the space shuttle. The Department of Defense, in turn, put together a manned space flight engineer program. Military officers selected for that would train as a payload specialist. They would be assigned to a program office building a satellite that was going to be launched on the shuttle, and they would become an expert on both, and then be the on-orbit expert when they flew on the shuttle and launch this satellite. Everybody that I knew, because I was in the space end of things, was really excited. They thought this was very cool. But a funny thing happened. When it came time to apply, one application went in. That was it. That application was mine. Everybody else said, they'll never pick me, and they quit. So I got to train, I had a mission, Challenger happened, everything changed. But was I better than all my friends? Was I better than all my coworkers? Absolutely not. In fact, there were several people I went, they're gonna get picked. I'm not gonna get picked. The only difference in the outcome was I applied and they did not. And I guarantee you that 100% of the people who do not try do not succeed. So let me give you an analogy. Think about it, would, think about what you, how you would look at a foot race, where 50 people line up at the, at the starting line, eyeballing the competition. And they come to a decision in their own mind, the starter's guns go off, one person runs and everybody else goes, well, I got somewhere else to be, and leave because they didn't think they could win. Don't be that path. Don't go down that path. And you know, I was, I was a three strikes and you're out kind of girl. 
I was interested in science, athletics, and uh, music. And even music had limited opportunities for women. The interesting uh, thing that came out of that was, <laughs> I'm sorry, I get this right. Um, but the, the interesting thing that came out of that was the um, amazing pressure there was to think about conforming and going down a particular path. You don't have to do that. Keep your imagination as broad as possible. So going on from that to character. Character is defined by the intangibles. The things that make you, you, and me, me. It's the answer to the question, who am I? What's important to character? Integrity is important. Leadership is important. Knowing when to follow and how to follow is important. It's important to be just, to be kind, to be gracious. There are many aspects to character. Character, building character, is the work of a lifetime. Your lifetime, my lifetime. And this is where you need a moral compass. Because there are lots of moral challenges. Everyone knows that there are moral challenges in the hard times, the tough times. We all get knocked down. It's not whether or not you get knocked down. It's how you get back up again, and when. Do you get back up angry and bitter? Or do you get back up and say, hmm, what can I learn from this? You forgive yourself and others, and then you move on to the future. There are moral challenges in the hard times and in the tough times. But there are also moral challenges in the good times when everything is going great. You're on the top of the world. You're at the peak of your career. President Abraham Lincoln recognized that. And I'll paraphrase him. He said, if you want to test the character of a person, give them power. One last thought. You'll probably be pressured to be, uh, do something or be like a popular rock star, an athlete, maybe even somebody at school. And if you haven't been pressured yet, you probably will be. My recommendation, be true to yourself. Oscar Wilde, an author, said it very well. He said, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. After each promotion, I was told by at least one person, I would never be promoted again. If, uh, I didn't fit the mold. I wasn't following a traditional career path. In fact, when I was a second lieutenant, I had been in this service less than a year. And I was told by somebody I would never be promoted. I laughed at that because at that time, the only way not to be promoted from second lieutenant to first lieutenant was to be in jail. <laughs> yeah. So try not to be infamous. And don't worry about being famous. I watched an interview and a question and answer session with Whoopi Goldberg back several years ago. She was talking to a group of college theater majors. She was asked a question during the Q&A session about being famous. She had a really great answer. She said, don't worry about being famous. Fame is fleeting and random. Worry about being good at your craft. Because if you're really good at your craft, you may or may not get to be famous, but you will make an enormous difference in people's lives. Good counsel. And that is what tonight is about, isn't it? Each of you here tonight 
has made a difference. You've led by example and set a good example. You have inspired other kids and adults alike. Congratulations to all here for living out your courage and your character and making a positive difference. One last quote. Nito Cabane is the current president of High Point University in North Carolina. He arrived a number of years ago in the United States from the Middle East with marginal English skills and less than $50 in his pocket. A couple of years ago, he made this statement. He said, your current circumstances do not determine where you go. They only determine where you start. To that I would add, remember the question, how far can you see? My congratulations to everyone here tonight. Well done.